Okay, for the covariance rules um, listed on the website, let's just kind of recap the formula. The covariance for two random variables is, by definition, this. So the expected value of the product of the difference of the x from its mean and y from its mean. Alternatively, we can write this. Like, let's put brackets like so, which was proven in a previous video. And what we want to note is that this is not the sample variance that you guys might have come across. A sample co sorry, sample covariance, which looks something like this. and then times standard deviation of x times standard deviation of y. This is for the sample. This here corresponds to the population covariance. That's when we know the distributions of x and y. So when the, in a the question they give you the random variable for x and y, say x is normal, y is a normal distribution, you can go ahead and do something like this, uh, not something like this unless you're given the sample data. Okay, first result. The covariance of a constant, say A, and a random variable is zero. Intuitively, this makes sense because A is a constant. It doesn't change. When X changes, A just stays fixed, so there's no kind of linear relationship between the two. So this here is equal to, using the definition of covariance, A minus the expected value of a, let's just write it all down, x minus the expected value of x, but we know that the expected value of a constant is a constant, okay, using expectation rules, so this automatically goes to zero, i.e. if I had to write something down, this here is a minus a, zero times x minus mu x, but zero expected value of zero times a number is the expected value of zero, which is a constant, which is equal to zero. Done. Alternatively, uh, and I'm going to be using the second method from now on, is to use the uh, write the covariance in the other way. So expected value of the product of the two things we're looking at, ax minus the expected value of at the pro mi minus the product of the expectations of each. Okay, then using the uh, rule here, A comes out. Expectation rules. Expected value of a constant is a constant. Expected value of x is x. And again, zero. Okay, whichever way. I'm going to prefer this way. Right, next we have that the covariance of x and y is same as the covariance of y and x. In other words, it doesn't matter which way around you write them. It's like saying 1 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 1. All right? This is what we call symmetry property, which is symmetry property is useful in statistics, can simplify problems. But here, let's just do it. Um, this is quite simple because the left-hand side, we can write it as, using the definitions, it could be written like this using Okay, one of the exp second expression I gave you, and the right-hand side covariance y x y x minus mu y mu x, and then just compare the two. Expected value of x and y is the same as expected value of y and x, because to say expectation of x times y is the same as expectation of y times x. Uh, these two are numbers, so obviously it doesn't matter which way around you multiply them. As I said, 1 times 2 is the same as 2 times 1. So we're done. If you want a kind of more explanation for this one, let's say x and y are discrete, then we know that the formula for x times y is equal to sum of each of these guys, x, y, i, times the, okay, sorry, x, i, y, j, over all probabilities, x i y j, 
over all x and y, whereas this one times times x is again just this, pretty much the same thing, just switching these two around. The probabilities can just remain the same. So obviously these two are equivalent. You're just swapping the product around. All right. So that's done. Okay, next. And doing these, you're going to get the, you know you get the hang of it. You can see that I'm using pretty much the same technique all the time. Covariance and x and x is actually the same as saying variance of x. Pretty nice property here. So why is that? Well, again from the definition, x and x. Let's just substitute in this. Before we had x and y, but now it's just x and x. So if we just it's expected value of the product of these two guys. Well, it's x squared minus the mean of that times the mean of that, well they're both the same, so mean of x twice. Well by definition this is the variance of x. I'll just put the here on the side. Recall that the definition of variance of x is equal to the expected value of x minus mu x all squared. Or it can be written alternatively as e expected value of x squared minus mu x all squared. Both the same things. So I've just shown this from here. So it's done. Later on I'm going to use this, right then I'm going to use this to derive an alternative formula for variance of x plus y. So hang around for that if you're interested. Alright, next covariance of a scalar times a random variable x times a scalar times variable y is equal to the product of the two scalars times the covariance of x and y. Now that's useful because if we know the covariance of x and y and we want the covariance of scale x x and y, all we do is take the scale, times them together, these two numbers, and then times it by the covariance of x and y, uh, which we have. Okay, proof. So, this guy here is equal to, you can write down the definition, expected value of the product of the two guys, ax times by, minus the expected value of this guy, times the expected value of the other guy. Right, using my expectation rules. Note that I'm using expectation rules so much here. You, if you don't know them, uh, look back at my video where I, I presented them. Uh, constants come out of the expected value sign. A and B is a constant. Expected value of x times y. Similarly here, expected value of A times x. A comes out. Same thing here. B comes out. I could put B here or I could put B here. Does I'll just group them together because it looks good. Because, you know, as I said, um, A times E times B times E, same as just swapping them all around. It doesn't matter what order you do them. Uh, okay. Well, common factor of A and B in each side, isn't there? Well, I've written B, B, A, but it, B, B, A, same as A, B, for the reason I've given before. So let's take A, B out. It's common factor. That's expected value of X, Y. My expected value of X. Expected value of Y. Okay, and um, we are done, aren't we? Okay, so if I were using my previous notation, that's mu x, this is mu y. Okay, so this is a, b, and this whole thing is by the definition covariance of x and y. And next, covariance of a linear combination x plus y with z. Okay, so that's a new random variable which is made up of sum of two of, and we want that. Co co covariance of this new random variable with z. Okay, we show that this is going to be equal to, we can break it down, which makes it easier to calculate, break it down into separate sums. Like so. That's what we're going to show. Right, so that's neat. So if we've got a random variable which is sum of, made up of some of some other ones, and we want the co covariance of that new variable with z, then it's just broken down into the covariance of z with each individual component of these guys 